Welcome back to The Heat. Joining us now from San Francisco is Janet Young. She's a Golden Globe and Emmy-winning producer behind such films as Shanghai Calling, Dark Matter, and The Joy Luck Club. Also with us from Los Angeles is Peter Xiao. He is the founder and CEO of Orb Media Group and founder and chairman of the US-China Film Summit. Welcome to you both. Fascinating discussion. Janet, I want to start with you. You know, you have worked on a lot of these crossovers. You're ahead of the curve. Do you think there's this new trend in this co-production between Hollywood and China? I think for many of us, we saw it as an inevitable trend. Mm. There is so much going on in China. The market is booming, and yet there are so many wonderful resources in Hollywood that are frankly underutilized at this point because there are fewer and fewer films being made here. So many of us believe that combining the best of Hollywood and China really makes for a winning formula. And I think that's what we're, we're intending to do. It's, the, the difficulty, of course, is finding the right subject matter and executing it in a way that pleases countries on both sides of the Pacific. But uh, we believe this is just uh, the beginning of, of what, uh, what the future will look like. Janet, we'll get on to content in a minute. Peter, I want to talk to you about business sense here. You know, we're seeing a lot more deals between China and Hollywood. The Wonder Group, for example, big property empire, buying the AMC cinema chain. Also, investments into production companies like Legendary. Is this increasingly making business sense for Chinese companies to link themselves to Hollywood? Absolutely. Look, I think, I think just this weekend alone in China, the box office, we see that there's no limits to what the box office will do if the entertainment is right. And as China is only capable of producing up to a certain level, it makes sense that they want to diversify. They want to have access to Hollywood talent, Hollywood content, and the companies that know how to do it. It's an expensive business, though, Janet, making a movie, and not always a, a profitable one. Um, how do you make hits uh, for a Chinese audience out of Hollywood, and a global one? Uh, you need a lot of cultural sensitivity. You need to really study the marketplace and look at what they're uh, attracted to. Um, but, and, you know, what's interesting about the Chinese market is very enviable. The audience likes movies of all kinds, all different genres. They've, they've embraced a lot of Hollywood movies, a lot of local movies. So there's really quite a wide spectrum to choose from. I think the key is making sure that both audiences are pleased. And uh, what I find interesting is that um, Hollywood is, you know, America is still number one market and perhaps soon to be number two, almost definitely. But it's still a very large market, and, and China now is a number two, but also growing. So it's, it makes sense that Chinese companies, which are growing rapidly, want to be able to also access the American market just as American companies want to access the Chinese one. Why give up the second largest market, you know, even though you may have the first? But it is about finding the magic formula, isn't it, Peter? For example, Kung Fu Panda 3 did extremely well with the tie up there we we're just talking about with Oriental Dreamworks and, and Dreamworks. But then we have homegrown hits like Monster Hunt, for example. Was it $380 million in China and barely tens of thousands here in the US, despite lots of effort to push it? What's behind that? Well, I would, I would say that, first of all, the advertising is not ideal. Look, when you're in China, you make a, a very, very good film. There's a freshness factor. Mm. But when you take a movie like Monster Hunt, which is very, very fresh and interesting by Chinese standards, but by Hollywood standards, is a pretty good film. But then it's got to compete with lots and lots of other things. So for this kind of specialized Chinese film that's going to do very well in China and do very well in North America, which has always been a somewhat a parochial market when it comes to language, uh, you have to be extraordinary. You yeah. have to overcome lots and lots of barriers. So it's not quite there yet, but I trust that in given time it will be. Janet, you wanted to pick up? Well, I was just going to say, by the way, Monster Hit Hunt has already been beaten by another movie called The Mermaid. <laughs> so that's just, it's every weekend practically there's record-breaking news. You know, what does the Hollywood executive, Janet, have to understand about the Chinese market? Because you can imagine on the profit and loss sheet, they see the booming Chinese audience. They say, look, we've got to get in here. Uh, this is a no-brainer. Um, but then it's difficult, necessary to get the hit. So what would you say to Hollywood audiences about who's watching movies, why and how? I think, first of all, it involves a level of humility to really get 
uh, to a place where you can listen and receive because Hollywood has dominated this industry for so long and it's very natural for a lot of people to feel like, oh, we know how to do this. This is this mm. is what we do, and we've done it better than everyone in the past. So it's really being extremely humble and being extremely sensitive. And then looking at certain factors. I mean, one of the fascinating phenomenon right now is that the tickets are sold primarily through on through group online ticket sales. So you have these companies that are buying vast numbers of tickets and then creating promotions and group ticket sales and and this is a way to motivate Chinese to go to you know the theater even more. And then you look at things like the different genres and and you know the Monster Hunts and Pancakes Man. If I think it would be very difficult for a Westerner to make that kind of movie, frankly, at the moment, but trying to understand what is appealing about those movies, and then incorporating some of that in in the projects, and looking very closely at, at you know which stars are very appealing, you know, and also social media is intensely important. They don't spend nearly as much money on marketing because they don't have to, so they have yeah. the free the free promotion through social media, and that is hugely influential. Uh, Janet, you come up with a good point, and Peter, uh, she mentioned humility and Hollywood in the same sentence, not something you often hear uh, about when it comes to uh, <laughs> uh, addressing new, new audiences. Um, but in China, it is very different in the way movies are promoted and distributed. I was quite amazed researching for this show how, uh, you know, the big three technology companies like Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent have really got their hooks around how to sell tickets to young people, where they go, the promoting across social media. Has Hollywood got a lot to learn about the sort of new dynamic 21st century Chinese market? Absolutely. When you talk about Baidu, Alibaba, Tencent, otherwise known as BAT, yeah. Look, these are technology companies that are quite advanced, and they're in the mainstream entertainment business in China, whereas you don't have Google or Facebook and other comparable Western technology companies having the same position in the marketplace. So, indeed, Hollywood could learn a few things from how China is really creating an industry based on the trends of today as opposed to yesterday. And part of it is they have nothing to defend as they're creating this business as right in front of our eyes, that um, they could be where the consumers are at today. So these are some of the things that I think will shape uh, how the world approaches this industry. But you know, as we're talking about uh, the success of China, let me just be the naysayer in the room that in as much as the success has been amazing and overwhelming for the top 10% of Chinese films that actually do make money, 90% of them don't make money. Mm. And these are not the stories That's that we're hearing about. There, there's, there's, there, it's, it's, inc it's an incredibly challenging and competitive marketplace. And when you look at these grosses, you also, we need to remember that uh, the Chinese office, box office is driven, the revenue is driven 90% by box office in China, whereas in the rest of the world it's about 30, 35%. There, there's a lot of things that China needs to develop to go to the next step, including developing secondary markets in addition to box office. Uh, Janet, you were going to say that a lot of films also lose money in Hollywood, I presume? Yeah, I was just going to say that's pretty classic, that <laughs> ratio of about 10% of the films making money. That's nothing new. I think what's staggering about China, though, is just how much money the, the profit margin on on those successful films uh, is huge. Because like Monster Hunt being a great be, example, yeah? Yeah, you could make a film for, you know, in the tens of millions and make hundreds and hundreds of millions. And that doesn't happen that much here. I agree with Peter that the ancillary markets in China need to develop it, but that to me shows that there's so much more room for growth. Well, and uh, it's so, it, 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 there, there are so many surprises all the time. I think we all watch, nobody really has the, the, you know, the crystal ball, but growth I think is in the future for some time to come for sure. Question to you both, Janet, first. You know, one thing that stood out uh, to me is content is king and everyone understands that. Um, but distribution could be queen. And the distribution in China is difficult. And a lot of these tie-ins, do they get around the limits of foreign movies if you co-produce with a Chinese company being accessed? Because there's not a lot of foreign movies allowed into China every year. How many is it? Is it 30-something? Yeah, 34 on a revenue-sharing basis. The studios are obviously vying for those spaces. and. 
and they, they put forth their biggest movies. But you're absolutely right that distribution, although they are building theaters, every new screens pop up every day in China, every day, there's still a mad rush and competition for getting those screens. The pipe the, the getting the screens is turning out to be one of the most important factors. You want to grab as many screens as you can in that first weekend. So the reason for co-productions, one of the several reasons, is that you can be released, those co-production films can be released during holiday seasons, and you get a better share of the box office than you would if you were a pure Western film being imported, if you can even get one of those slots. And, and, and that's why I think there's life. And Kung Fu yes. Panda Kung 3 Fu Panda did, did three. right at the uh, Chinese New Year, which was perfect uh, for that launch, Peter. Um, I want you to pick up with something that, that Janet just said about the explosion of movie theatres. 50 new movie theatres a day in China. Wow. Um, yep. wow. That is just so big. Um, how is content going to keep up uh, with that demand? Well, it, the, the good news is it's already keeping up. And I think several years ago, it was the secondary or the third-tiered cities now is the fourth and fifth-tiered cities. Look, China, by Western standards, standards is still incredibly underscreened. So there is a tremendous growth, and we see that as movies go to smaller Chinese towns, people are discovering them all over again. Mm. So it, it's really quite tremendous, and, the, and, and I think it will continue to grow. Janet, you sit in, uh, you've worked in Hollywood, and you know what a big brand Hollywood is. Look, most people around the planet have heard of John Wayne before they heard, hear of John Woo. It's been a huge, huge soft power machine for US and its supposed values and everything. Can that happen to China? I, for myself, I believe it not only can happen, but it will happen. And it's, an, it's a unique and extraordinary opportunity that presents itself at this moment in time where people are very interested in seeing more Chinese stories, want to understand how the Chinese mind works. And it's an opportunity for China to be more in the public eye and to shape the image of Chinese and Asians in general and really sort of tilt an axis in another way. I, I believe very much in the power of movies because it, it strikes people at a very subconscious psychological level. And I just think seeing stories that have more Chinese characters it can only be good for mutual understanding. I think there's been a, a, a big wall, so to speak, you know, between what has been allowed on screen in the past. And uh, I think China's about to change that. And I, 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 for one, am very much looking forward to both participating and being an observer of what, uh, what's to come. Peter, this is not just a Hollywood China thing. This is a global thing, isn't it? Uh, we're seeing Pinewood Studios, for example, in the UK, famous for James Bond and Star Wars launch projects in China. All these uh, tie-ins that we're seeing globally, and we haven't even mentioned Bollywood, of course, which, of course, is the biggest uh, outside Hollywood when it comes to uh, international films, India. Um, how does China make global hits going forward? Well, that's a very, very good question, and uh, I know this is something that's causing a lot of folks in China to scratch their heads, and I think part of it, uh, and Janet began to talk about it a little bit, is really incorporating folks who have worked in the global space for some time, uh, and I think we're already seeing that happen in real time, whether it's getting uh, screenwriters with the ability or the experience to write for a global marketplace, getting uh, technologies involved that create a slicker, uh, better look, so, and then accessing global distribution uh, channels, whether it's through acquisition or through, through the strength of the product, we're seeing all of that happen in real time. I think this is where we're starting to see a, a public-private partnership in China as well, whereas the government, the private sector, and the creative artists all want the same thing. So a lot of people are scratching their heads, and there's a lot of experimentation going on. Lo lo and many of us are involved in that process. Last question to both of you. All this leads, of course, the ultimate accolade that every movie, movie maker wants, Peter, then Janet. When is a Chinese-made film going to win an Oscar? Uh, I would say it already has already happened with, with Ang Lee. <laughs> Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, at least that was a Chinese language film, and that was an Oscar right. winner. So in my view, it's kind of already happened, and I think there's going to be one that is not necessarily associated with Taiwan, as Ang Lee is thought to be, uh, but coming out of mainland China. And I think, look, it's going to happen, just a matter of time.
Janet, uh, you've got your finger on the pulse of Hollywood. When's, yeah, when's China's well, film going to get an Oscar? I th I, first of all, I think a lot of things might happen before that Chinese film wins an Oscar, for instance. We're going to see Chinese Jedis in the new Star Wars uh -huh. movie. We're going to see more Chinese characters popping up in international movies. And then gradually, I think these worlds are just going to kind of fuse together, and soon it won't even be that obvious what's a Chinese film and what's a Western film. Mm. There's a new film that Zhang Yimou is, you know, is coming out with early next year, which stars Matt Damon, called The Great Wall. So oh, is that the one that with that the aliens and aliens invading China? It's called, yes, yes. it's called The Great Wall, Can't and there's a lot of it. anticipation about that. It's um, so, so it's going to be a film with Chinese, a Chinese feel, Chinese characteristics, maybe Chinese actors, maybe a Chinese director. It's hard to say exactly what that will be, but it will just be a better integration of Chinese elements into global films. That, that is my prediction. Janet Young, thanks so much for joining us. Peter Xiao, that's all we have time for. To learn more about China's growing film industry, be sure to log on to our website, ccv-america.com. I'm Nathan King, Washington, D.C. Thanks so much for watching.